this what you see is a 180 volts 1.5 horsepower permanent magnet dc motor that is usually used in trade mills we can see two brush slots similar to many other dc motors now if we open up the brush slots on both the sides we can see how big the brushes are when compared to our common dc motors the brushes power the motor armature that triggers the rotational movement of the motor now i am going to use this 12 volts 42 ampere hour battery pack to test it at just 12 volts therefore we can now proceed further Here's this great news guys, I have this new website www.electrondeals.com You can see there are so many countries listed for products to buy from Amazon and if not then there is Banggood Worldwide Here you can see similar products are going to be listed in two pages just like the other countries and if we click on the buy on Amazon link you are going to be redirected directly to that page of the product from where you can buy you don't have to go and search for the products Link will be provided in the description you can check it out So coming back to the video
Now guys, I have to tell you something really important. This piece that I took off from the flywheel, it is going to be the coupler of the two big DC motors. So uh, this is a piece from one of the motor. So it is going to get connected to that easily without any problem. But uh, the other DC motor, this is not uh, the part of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole through it and create a thread uh, and also drill a hole through the shaft of that motor and pass the screw through the shaft of the motor as well so that uh, this piece gets strongly connected to the shaft of the motor because otherwise when uh, the machine is going to be loaded in that case if there is no thread and the shaft is just passing through it like this it is going to slide over it under pressure let's get on to it Now I have successfully connected the two motors together mechanically but there are still two very important pointers that I have to keep in mind. The first one is the difference between the RPMs of the two DC motors. That should be as minimum as possible. The second one is that before connecting the two DC motors together electrically we will have to find out the direction of rotation of each motor. That should be same. The direction of rotation was clockwise. Therefore, we can now connect positive to positive and negative to negative.
So here I am 3D printing some parts for the machine. It's time to install them. Now guys, I will be using this 60 volts 2.7 amperes e-bike charger as power supply to run this giant DC motor, which is only one third of the rated voltage required by my DC motor. Since I still do not have the fully rated power supply for this machine, I will have to make it in another video. Whoa. So here as you can see that this power supply is not powerful enough to start the motor on its own. Now this what you see is a 50 to 65 volts DC 41,000 microfarad electrolytic capacitor which I will be using to boost up the amperes of my power supply positive to positive and negative to negative next one wire which is positive will be connected to the DC motor while the other wire will remain disconnected and it will be connected only after our capacitor has been fully charged it is quite amazing how adding a simple capacitor can boost up the starting current just enough to give it a push and get it started smooth right for measuring the starting current i'm going to use this skyweeds clamp meter which is already set at 60 amperes dc current measurement mode so i'm going to set it to maximum so that whatever the variation is for the starting currents it is only going to show the maximum 2.84 amperes which is around 180 watts because i am again feeding it with only 60 volts